the open map pro open street map project so one of the guys contributing to it without further ado from canada herne saint anand give it up hello can you hear me you can hear me um hello thank you um so my name is hervé uh, and i'm going to be talking about the open street map project um, I'm a software developer, uh, and also for about five years I've been a contributor to the, the project. And I've done most of my work in Sofia, so I'm one of the many people who've worked uh, on this map. And I'm going to show uh, a number of examples of the map. I'm going to talk about the, product, the project in general, but also the, the map as it relates to Sofia in particular. So what is OpenStreetMap? It's a map. Uh, and in that, you could say it's superficially similar to what Google or Apple or Bing have to offer. Um, it's, it's, it's a map that you find on the web. Um, but I'm going to show you there's a, a good number of differences uh, with those products. Uh, for one thing, OpenStreetMap does not have satellite imagery. So it's not a, a provider of satellite imagery. It's just the map. Um, and it's a map where you'll find the streets, buildings, and shops, addresses, and so on. Um, but really, OpenStreetMap is not a map, actually. It's, um, it's a database of the position of every object in the world. Um, and here I've shown some of the information that exists under the hood, so to speak, um, for a lot of objects in this area. You are here, by the way, <laughs> just there. Um, and so we can see that the database contains very basic information, like this is a street, this is a building, but also uh, all sorts of information that could be said to be metadata, like this street has cobbled, and this is the Wikipedia page for the Russian church, and so on. And um, so it's a very rich database of uh, geo information. Um, the, pro the map is freely editable. Anyone can join and make modifications straight away to the map, and these modifications are immediately published. Um, you can modify it in your browser on the website. I'll show some details of how that works. As you can see, what you're editing when you, you open it, open street map is, um, is you're not editing the rendered map. You're editing the database itself, and that gets rendered into a map, into a number of maps, as we'll see. Um, it's entirely free data. The database, you can download a whole dump if you want, or you can access it via a very simple API. The API is simple XML over HTTP. You don't even need authentication or anything. And um, the format of the data, I'll talk about it, but it's, it's really very simple to write a client for OpenStreetMap data. So it's, it, it should be quite appealing, I think, to developers. Basically, this has been said often, OpenStreetMap is like Wikipedia, but for maps. So it, the comparison works quite well. Um, anyone can contribute. So you, it's basically just entirely built by um, anonymous contributors. Um, quite importantly, there's, of course, some admins that run the servers and the database. But the admins don't decide the content. The content is entirely driven by the community. and. Um, so it's a very democratic uh, project overall. It's very ambitious, you could say, um, you know, trying to build an encyclopedia of everything or trying to build a map of the entire world are pretty big projects. Um, but I would say the quality can be surprisingly high. Um, both Wikipedia and OpenStreetMap uh, achieve something that I think you could think is impossible, uh, just letting anyone modify it and actually obtaining a good product. Um, like Wikipedia, it's not perfect also. When you're reading Wikipedia, you'll often find that it's not quite written the way a professional encyclopedia would be written. And it's the same with OpenStreetMap. You'll often find it's a good map, but you, you will find that it's, it's not the, quite the same as a, a professional product. Um, it's about 12 years old at the moment. Um, and it's growing fast. It's still in the growth phase. Um, this is a graph of the number of registered users over the years. Um, not all these users are still active, but um, you can see that people are signing up faster now than ever. Um, this is not going to last forever, but at the moment, uh, it's still early days for the project, basically. Um, 
and I would say it's a decent map of Sofia. Um, here's the, the progress that we've made, uh, for instance, in the last four years. Um, you can see that we've gained a lot of detail. Uh, we have pretty much every building. We have uh, bus stops. We have shops, schools, parks, footpaths, um, churches, and so on. And we have, I would, I, I would say we have pretty good coverage. I'm going to come back to that at the moment. But it's already a map that, of Sofia that you can use. Um, so this is how I'm going to break down the presentation. Um, I'm going to talk about OpenStreetMap from the perspective of users. What, what is it as a map product? Um, from the perspective of developers, what, what can a developer do with OpenStreetMap? From the perspective of contributors, what is it like to, be, to, 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 to participate in the project? And uh, as a conclusion, I'm going to say a few words about what OpenStreetMap means to me and what I hope it might be for you. So the main website is openstreetmap.org. If you go there, you will see something like this. Um, it's, it, it's superficially, like I said, a similar product to what you'll find on Google Maps, or rather, if we're being honest, what you found on Google Maps 10 years ago, um, because it's strictly an image. For instance, if you zoom in on, a, on a, uh, a shop, you cannot click on it and see its opening hours and a link to the website or things like that. Although a lot of that information is in the database, but um, the, the interface itself, I think, is not the great thing about OpenStreetMap. I'll, I'll talk more about what I think the great things are. But so it's a, it's a map website. You can search. You can get driving directions. If you click on the layers icon here on the right, you you will see that you can select different renderings from the map. Like I said, OpenStreetMap is at its core just a database. And there's several different uh, pieces of software written by different people that take that data and turn it into a rendered map. This is a one that, instead uh, of being trying to be as general as possible, emphasizes the bike paths and bike alleys uh, for planning bike trips. And there's others, that one that uh, emphasizes bus routes and so on. Um, here's a radically different rendering of, again, the same data. This is all the rivers and the streams in the area around Sofia. Sofia is somewhere around here, and you can see all the streams and all the rivers flowing down Vitusha, and they kind of all converge into River Iskar, I think it's called, uh, and into the Danube. And I'm showing this just to say that um, it's a database that can be looked at from several angles, and uh, it has a rather rich variety of data in it. Um, here's another uh, rather different rendering of the map. This is uh, Belite Brezi, and in that one neighborhood in particular, we have height information for the buildings. We don't have it for all of Sofia at the moment, but we do have it here, and so it allows a pretty neat uh, 3D map uh, entirely built on open software and, and open data, which is kind of neat. Um, there's a lot of apps that use uh, OpenStreetMap data. Um, typically, what these companies do is they take the entire database, and what one common feature is that they offer map uh, services that are entirely offline. So um, as you're walking about uh, or cycling about, you don't need to have a data connection. Uh, they'll offer you an update, for instance, every month. And um, it, it's, it's, it's an entirely offline app. That's one of the, the main uses because it's a single database that can be downloaded unlike any private uh, map database. Uh, that, that's, that's an option that the, the project offers. Um, the data quality, you sh should be asking yourself, yeah, but how good is it? Um, varies a lot depending on the country and the city. Um, OpenStreetMap was born in London, and uh, this is a map of the center of London, and it has an enormous amount of detail, and uh, it is apparently quite up to date. Um, there's a lot of contributors there. They constantly keep it up to date, and they add even the tiniest of details, like every single traffic light. Um, so it's, it's actually a, a, a very detailed map of the center of London. If you go to Sofia, this is around uh, Pliska, um, it's, I would say it's a pretty good map. We have close to 100%, I would claim, of streets, very close to 100% of buildings, but we are lacking a number of things like addresses. You'll see a lot of buildings here. We don't have the address for them. Um, we have decent coverage of schools, bus stops, and so on. Um, there's still work to be done if we want to be as complete uh, as, say, London. But like I said, the project is, is still growing fast, so it'll probably look quite different in another five years. Um, 
the other Bulgarian cities are also quite well mapped, like Varna, Plovdiv are, are quite well mapped. But the smaller a city or a town or a village you look at, um, the more you'll see missing detail. This is Vidin, and you can see that it's kind of half done. Um, and the bits that are done are pretty good, but it's still a uh, work in progress. Again, this will very likely look very different in five years. And this is Malku Tornovo, and uh, there's uh, just the streets, basically. There's, most street names are missing. We have one church, we don't know what it's called, um, and so on. So if you go to the, the Bulgarian villages, you'll see there's, there's quite a lot of information missing there, but we are getting there. Okay, so what have I said about OpenStreetMap for users? Um, the main website is OpenStreetMap.org, and you can use the map there. Um, but really, OpenStreetMap being just a database is rendered by a number of, of uh, uh, software packages, and so there's a lot of different renderings. There's a lot of apps that use the data, and the data quality is um, unequal, uneven, but um, it's pretty good, and in Sofia in particular, I would say it's, it's getting quite usable. So what does OpenStreetMap look like for developers? So here's just a quick... Uh, uh, thought experiment for developers. Suppose, um, suppose you want to build OpenStreetMap. Suppose it doesn't exist, and you want to build an open source map of the world. What sort of data structures would you use to represent any object in the world? Um, I would think a, a naive attempt uh, that, that I would try would be, well, you'd have some sort of, speaking in, in object-oriented terms, you'd have some sort of uh, a map object that would be at the root of your hierarchy, and then you would specialize that with, you know, there's streets, then there's buildings, uh, there's a, a building class, I suppose, and it has attributes like the number of floors and things like that. There's a street class and things like that. So, you know, you have a street object, and it has attributes like, is it a one-way street? What's its name? Is it paved? And, and, and things like that. So you, you can start simple like that, and then you ask yourself, okay, how about a footpath? A footpath is not a street, but it's a lot like a street, so should I just use the same class but change its properties, or should I make it a different class with a common ancestor? There's no single good answer. You have to, you have to make design decisions. Um, how about a bike path? Is a bike path just a type of footpath? I would say not, um, but... Again, you have to weigh the pros and cons of simplicity and flexibility. How about a bike path on a sidewalk? Is, is a bike path the attribute of the street? Is a bike path the attribute of the sidewalk? Is the sidewalk an attribute of the street? There, there's many, many ways you can build this. And the, the, what I'm trying to say is um, that you need a, a team of focused experts to make a, a huge number of design decisions um, to build a rather complex ontology of all the objects in the world. How are you going to organize every object in the world in your database? And, you know, the world is a complex thing, and any computer system that tries to describe the whole world um, is going to have to be complex. So here we have a bike lane. Here we have, again, a bike lane, but it, this one's different, because here the bikes go in both directions on the same side of the street. You need to capture that, and and it goes on, like, this is, again, a complex situation that you need to map. <laughs> and basically, you're pretty soon going to end up with a really complex ontology. That's okay. Many teams have done it. Um, but you need you, probably some senior architect with a good idea of the overall approach, how the whole thing, how the parts are going to interact together. And, and you need a focused team. And... If you're going to expand that to the entire world, there's always going to be things that wherever your developers are based, they can't think up in advance. Like, this is, for instance, a building that has two addresses. It has a number and a street, but it has a whole parallel address, which is the number and the GK name. And you, it, you, the British designers of the system couldn't have thought of that. Okay, that's, fu that, that's fine. What we'll do is, we'll, when we get to Bulgaria, we'll, we'll modify the system to, to allow that sort of thing. But it requires good knowledge of the system to make modifications to it. But then OpenStreetMap 
is there is no dedicated team of experts. Anyone can make changes at any time. And this sounds like a recipe for disaster. How can you let anyone make changes to the classification system, to the core data structures of the, of the map, without it becoming just an unmaintainable mess? And the solution that OpenStreetMaps designers used, I think is really clever. Um, it, it, it might look obvious, I don't know, but I, I thought it was pretty elegant. There's really only two data structures. There's actually three. There's, there's a third one not in here called a relation for grouping things together, but I'm going to keep it simple. Um, there's only two data structures. There's a node, which is just a coordinate, a, a, an exact coordinate on the surface of the Earth, and a way, which is a list of nodes, uh, an ordered sequence of nodes. And then the trick, where we pull a rabbit out of a hat, is that both of these whoop, both of these have tags. And these tags are just arbitrary strings. The database imposes no constraints on what either the keys or the values are. The, the editors are free to put any tags on any object. And all the ontology, all the complexity is moved to just those strings. And now we have the crowd. The crowd needs to agree on what strings are used for what, but the system will stay the same. The data structures won't have to evolve. It's all in those free text strings. So how does that work? Suppose you want to describe a street in OpenStreetMap. What you do is you lay down, in this example, three nodes, uh, along one at the end, one at the beginning of the, the street, and one everywhere where it changes direction. And then you're going to create, I mean, this example has three nodes. You put as many as ne are needed. And then you create a way to group these, these three nodes, to, to make a list of them. And then you're going to set some tags on the way. So the top, tags, the top tag here is, is the, the really crucial one that says, this is a residential street. So these are the tags that the community has settled on using. Um, and then you have all sorts of meta information, if you will. It's lit at night. It's called Moskovska, and it has sidewalks and so on. Um, if you want to map a footpath, it's a different type of object, but it's the same structures. You, again, you, you lay down some nodes, you join them with a way, and then the crucial bit is that the way shares a node, the footpath shares a node with the street, which means that a uh, routing software uh, will know that these two connect. And if someone walking on that path can then connect to that street. You're going to set some tags again. The tags are different. Uh, some are the same for the, the properties they have in common. Some are going to be different. Same thing if you want to map some steps. If you want to map a building, you just put, again, a node at the coordinates of every corner of the building. You're going to create a way that connects these nodes. But now, a street is a line, but a building is a polygon, effectively. So to make it a closed polygon, what you do is you add the, last, the, the first node, again, as a, a second time into the way as the last node. And this makes it a closed shape. And then you just give it tags like we did before. This one is a building, and here's data about it. Finally, some objects only require a node. Like if, if, if a very small object just requires, you don't need to describe its shape. You just say, here, there is a drinking fountain. Uh, this is all open data, as I said. So there's an API here. In this particular API call, um, you just give a rectangle of coordinates, and it will return you all the objects that are found uh, in that rectangle. You don't even need to authenticate for it to use the, uh, the API. You can just put that in your browser, um, and it'll work. So it, it's, it's very easy to connect to. You can download dump files. Um, the, 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 the entire planet file is 700 gig uncompressed, so you, you probably don't want that. But there's various companies that take that regularly and chop it up per country and per city, so you can download information about just one. Uh, one ju if you're interested in just one country, you can download a more manageable file. There's a whole ecosystem of tools around OpenStreetMap. I don't have time to show them all. Uh, or. Uh, actually, I only have time to show one. Um, this one is called Overpass, and it's a, um, it's a search engine where you can search for values on tags. So basically, it provides uh, extra functionality, if you will, for the API. Here, I'm searching for all nodes in Sofia that, have, um, that are tagged as a pharmacy, an apteca. Um, and um, the data here is in JSON, which some, some programmers might prefer. Um, although, li like I said, the XML is very simple, so it doesn't have most of the disagree uh, unpleasantness of, um, 
XML. And uh, if you take that data and you upload it to a different tool called UMAP, uh, UMAP will let you draw over a map. And um, for instance, here's I searched for uh, clothes stores uh, in the center, and you can see that the clothes stores are concentrated on Vitushka and Solunska and um, Graphic Nativ. Um, and which is hardly a, a, a big insight, but um, it's just to demonstrate that um, it's very easy to, to get some simple uh, uh, insight out of that data. Right, so what uh, does OpenStreetMap for developers look like? Um, if you want to build an ontology of data structures to describe the whole world, it's always going to be hard. And uh, you need a dedicated team, but we don't have a dedicated team. We are letting anyone make any change they like. Um, so using tags instead of a fixed ontology uh, is the, the way to enable that. Um, it's a super simple API and very simple XML data. You don't even need to read the documentation. It's just obvious how it's structured. And uh, no authentication, just you, you, some simple HTTP calls. Um, now, what does it look like to be a contributor to OpenStreetMap, an editor, someone who modifies the map? It's quite simple. It's just like in Wikipedia. If you see you are viewing the map, you can just click the Edit button, um, and you'll be dropped into the in-browser editor. Here you can move stuff around. You can click and um, delete, rename, uh, and add new things. Uh, and it's, it's, it's fairly intuitive to use. And I've said that everything is represented as tags, but actually, when you're beginning, you don't even need to, to, to really know any tags, because the, the default editor in the left-hand side column presents you with a nice graphical interface um, where you can just fill in boxes and select from drop-downs uh, the type of building that this is. This is a church and so on. The address is, is already, you know, you just fill in the right fields. Um, and so you don't, you don't, at the beginning anyway, you don't need to know the tags to actually make some changes. But the tags are there. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom in that left-hand side column, uh, you'll see what the, the tags that the, when you picked those choices and you filled in those boxes, the graphical interface translates that into tags, and this is what gets uploaded to the API. Um, and so uh, it's, it's a good idea to look. You, uh, when you're beginning, you can just make your choices in the GUI, and then um, uh, see what tags the editor translates that into, and that's a good way of just learning what the main tags are. Now, this community needs to agree on what tags to use for various objects, and the main way to synchronize is the wiki. Um, so uh, the wiki has a page for pretty much every type of object uh, that is represented in OpenStreetMap. And um, you can browse, see examples, and, and see um, documentation maintained by the community itself. Every, anyone is welcome to modify the wiki, too. Um, and so, for instance, I was talking about classifying uh, bike paths earlier. This is the page on bike paths that says, you know, if it looks like this, these are the tags you'd use. Or if it looks like this, these are the tags you use. But it's interesting to see that, actually, just this one here, there's three alternatives to how you can tag. And, and it's, it's a fairly wild database in that it's certainly parsable and usable, but it, there's also a lot of variation in it, uh, reflecting the fact that it was, um, it's maintained, literally, by the crowd. Here's categorizing shops. If you have a shop, um, you can say what type of shop it is uh, to differentiate an alcohol shop from a bakery by giving them the, a, a tag that has the key of shop, and then the value will be the type of shop that it is. And that's very, it's actually surprisingly hard to categorize shops like this. And so the wiki is here with photos and descriptions for um, giving an idea of what tags are in common use and, and what tags are recommended. Here's an example of where the wiki doesn't even agree with itself. If you want to tag the phone number of a shop, there's actually two ways to do it. Uh, what th these are screenshots from two different pages. One is for the, a tag called phone, and the other one is called contact, colon, phone. Um, and both link to each other. Bo both are aware of each other's presence, but um, it's just there's not one way to do it in this case. Um, I think over the years, probably, the community will folk, uh, fossilize, settle on, on one of these two. But so the, the, the point is that it's well organized. It's, it, it's, it's, it's quite well organized. But um, there are inconsistencies, as you might expect, from a, a, a rather, uh, well, a very open project like this. If the wiki is, is kind of the, um, the, the prescriptivist 
uh, source of information that tells you you should do it like this. This is, this is how you should do it. There's an alternative to that, which is very descriptivist. It doesn't say any shoulds or, or must, but it's simply, this is how people are doing it. It's called tag info. And this one, it's just an index of every tag used on the whole planet. And it shows you, you can search, you can compare, you can see what often comes together. Um, and it's a very useful way of, of seeing um, what, uh, what other mappers are doing. Um, and it, it shows the very democratic nature of the project in that um, often the best way to find out how to tag a certain object is not to, to refer to a rule book, but simply to see what, what are other people doing, how, how would do other people do it. Um, and anyone can introduce new tags. Um, when you're parsing OpenStreetMap data, whether it's the, 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 the official program that generates the main map from it, or whether you want to know where the, the, the clothes shops are, you always need to just ignore tags that you don't know. There's always going to be a lot. So in, anyone can, it's like HTML tags. You can just put a new HTML tag if you want in your document. It's just not going to do anything. Um, it, it, the way it works here is that if you, if you, if you see a sort of object that there, you think there's no appropriate way to tag at the moment, you just go, get started. You just start tagging it in your new way that you think is correct. The key is you have to convince others to use it. Uh, typically, that would be using the wiki. Um, you just say, hey, look, I think this sort of object, it's not, we don't have the right way to, to map it. If you manage to convince people, if they, as people can see that more and more people are using your new tag, um, it, you can maybe reach a critical mass and then eventually the data consumers will have to start handling that tag rather than just ignoring it as everything else that they don't understand. Um, but it, it, it's, it, anyone can just start adding new data if they want. There's a mailing list. Uh, in fact, there's dozens of mailing lists uh, grouped by topic. Uh, this one, the tagging mailing list is very active. All sorts of conversations about how do, we, do I tag this? How should we tag that? I think this is wrong. Um, there's a forum for Bulgaria, um, which so it's, it serves the same sort of purpose as the mailing list, um, and it's it's hosted on the OpenStreetMap uh, website, um, it, and it's 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 good I think for uh, at least two two reasons. If you want to ask questions that are specific to Bulgaria, then you have a, a place to ask. Or if you're not comfortable asking in English, uh, here's a place where you can ask general questions in Bulgarian. There's basically three ways to add data to OpenStreetMap. Three main ways that I, I would say. One is called surveying. Surveying is just you're on the street and you see something that's missing and um, you, you, or something that's wrong and you, you want to update it. There's plenty of apps. I'm showing one here called maps.me, but there, there's plenty of apps that will let you do that for varying degrees of, of uh, for, for, for advanced users and for uh, new users. So. Uh, Maps.me is, is, is primarily just for helping you, you know, you're in the center and you're like, where are the bars here or where can I find a, a change bureau to, to, to change money and um, give me directions to my friend's house and things like that. But it also has this function, it's, not, it's all built on OSM data and it has this functionality that you can say, oh, there's a restaurant here, it's not on the map, and it'll just quickly ask you, okay, well, what's the name of the restaurant? And bam, it's, it gets saved to OpenStreetMap. So it's a very good way of getting started. Um, However, I must warn you that once you start, if, if you're like me, it becomes very addictive. It becomes very hard to just be walking down a street and thinking, oh, I wonder whether that information is in OpenStreetMap. In open oh, here's some detail that's probably not there. There's a new shop here. I don't think that was there before. There's a building there. I don't think we have that aspect of it. And the thing is, there's so many things in the world that can be mapped. Once you start getting to, into details, um, it, it, it's a never-ending task, really. And it's a lot of fun. But um, if you're not careful, you'll end up, like this gentleman, um, actually leaving your house to go and map, um, like planning with papers or apps, and actually planning uh, walk about, walks about to, to um, survey for the map, which personally I think is a lot of fun. The second way to obtain data is tracing from satellite images. So, oh, there's a little animation here that's not working, but the, the, the point is, um, uh, there, there are two companies that provide um, 
satellite imagery for the OpenStreetMap project, Bing, and uh, a company called Mapbox. And uh, we can simply, it, it's very useful mostly for roads and buildings because it's kind of hard when you're standing in front of a building to, to know its exact shape. Um, but the satellite imagery is there for that. Uh, so it's quite simple, really. You just you see the missing buildings, you see the missing roads, and you draw them in the editor. Um, there's, there's a whole topic that would uh, be enough for a talk in itself, but I'll just have one slide about it. Humanitarian mapping. Um, there's, it turns out there's a lot of places that just don't have maps, uh, either in impoverished countries or in Africa or in Asia. And um, often when disaster strikes, foreign aid workers um, come in to, to help. This was taken in Haiti after the earthquake a few years ago. Um, but they just don't have maps to get around a city that they don't know, these, these um, foreign aid workers. Um, and what humanitarian mapping is about is simply getting a, a large number of volunteers in one room, everyone looks at satellite imagery, and everyone just tries to, to make a map of all the streets and buildings in a particular place, and then as, uh, rush that map into the hands of the, the workers as fast as possible. And apparently it's, it's, it's very welcome. Um, so yeah, the third way to get data, so we've seen surveying, we've seen um, satellite imagery tracing. The third way is importing data. Um, this is a screenshot of the map of Brussels, and all these perfectly aligned and perfectly numbered buildings are not the work of a very, very meticulous mapper. It could have been, um, but in this case, it's um, the uh, government of uh, uh, Brussels has a free open data set and uh, it was uh, simply uploaded. They, they have the exact footprint of every building. It was just uploaded to the map. Um, this, 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 this is great because it can, basically it's like jumping ahead in the project a, a very long distance. It can really uh, achieve a lot very quickly. Um, however, it has a number of, it, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword because it, it's, it's very powerful, but it's, it's kind of dangerous. Integrating data you, you can't just, for instance, when they imported the buildings, there were already buildings in Brussels. It was not a blank map. And you can't just erase everything and replace it with the data you're importing. That integration requires actually a lot of manual work. Um, quite importantly, the, the, the core members of the, the OpenStreetMap community are very vocal about um, keeping everything absolutely legal and uh, free of copyright infringement. And it turns out that there's a lot of sources that could call themselves open data, but actually you're not allowed to just take it and put it in another product without attribution for anyone to reuse. Um, and um, this is one of the only things that where the admins use their admin superpowers. If they see data that's important um, without having been discussed on the wiki, on the mailing list, without having gotten uh, approval, uh, it just gets reverted and it gets deleted. Uh, but when done properly, it's, a, it's an extremely powerful mechanism. Finally, there's a few ways to contribute that don't actually involve you making changes to the map. If you go to the main website and you click the little speech bubble here, you'll be able to leave a map, a, a note on the map for editors to, to do something. So you don't even need to be logged in. You can leave it anonymously. And it's just like, you know, uh, th th there's these streets that don't actually connect. That park is named such and such. And then someone else will have to take care of it. So that's a, a, a way to help very quickly. Um, there's at least two projects that aim to emulate Google Street View, uh, but sourced from the crowd. One is called Mapillary and is a for-profit uh, startup, and one is called Open Street View and is a non-profit uh, open source uh, effort. And uh, basically the idea is, you know, we want to have something like Google Street View, but entirely free data and, and, and sourced from everyone. This can be very useful for OpenStreetMap contributors because um, if the photos are recent, it can allow you to map an area that you've not actually physically been present in. Um, Mapillary in particular, they will, if you just ask them, they will give you for free a little mount like this to attach your smartphone to uh, either the windscreen of your car or to the handlebars of your bike. And then they have an app. You just press a button and you drive around or you drive to work and um, it'll upload everything and, and create a, 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 an experience somewhat comparable to that of Google Street View. And that can be a very useful source of data for uh, OpenStreetMap. Finally, another way to contribute, um, if you're not into mapping, is source code. Everything, of course, is open source. The um, 
the main website is a Ruby on Rails website. Um, the main editor is all in JavaScript and CSS. Uh, the more advanced editor that is used by more um, experienced users is written in Java. The overpass API that we saw is written in C++, and the UMAP interface for displaying the heat map is written in Python. So there's really something for everyone. There's probably a Perl script in there as well. Um, although no Fortran, as so some several people earlier said they, they write Fortran on a regular basis. Um, but there's, there, there should be something for, for everyone. And one final warn warning that is, uh, I think, worth uh, mentioning at this point is um, don't copy from other maps. It's very tempting when you look, for instance, at the map of Malko Tornovo that I showed earlier, and all the street names are missing. And you're like, well, that's easy. I'll just you know, open two windows, open Google's, Google Maps in one and open Street View in the others, and copy the names, you know, and then the map will be better. Um, the main problem with that is that it puts OSM in a dodgy legal situation because it's against Google's terms of service. Of course, if it's just one street name, there's no way they'll ever know. Um, but it's something that uh, the community is very, very sensitive about um, because they don't have, uh, Google has armies of lawyers and OpenStreetMap doesn't. Um, and uh, there, th there's many people who worry a lot that um, the whole project could be jeopardized by having uh, technically uh, improper data in the database. There's also, of course, the fact that you could just be propagating other sites' errors, um, especially in small towns in Bulgaria. Google doesn't always get it right. And I would argue, more, perhaps more abstractly, it really doesn't actually help. Open, you know, people can go use Google Maps if they want, right? Um, it's already there. The, I think, you know, OpenStreetMap is great because we're creating a, an entirely free geospatial database of the entire world. The point is, this was entirely contributed by the crowd, by everyone just walking about with their smartphones and adding the bits that are missing. Um, just copying from Google, it kind of defeats the purpose, really. Um, th there's already full usable map products out there. That's not the point, I would argue. Um, so, in summary, what, what is it like contributing to OpenStreetMap? Um, the main ways of contributing, you walk about, you notice something missing, you add it to the map, called surveying. Um, and there's tracing from satellite imagery, mostly for streets and uh, buildings. And there's um, imports, which is if you have some good open data that you can add to the project. You could also just leave a note for work, um, editors to do the work, um, record mapillary, um, street view-like tracks, or open street view, or contribute to the code. And finally, it bears repeating, uh, please don't copy from other maps. Um, so as, as a, a sort of conclusion, I'll, I'll say a few words about why I care. I mean, the main reason I care is because I like maps. But um, th I think it goes a bit further than that. Because OpenStreetMap, I think it can be argued, is the biggest free um, geospatial database there is. And, um, and it, with worldwide coverage, certainly. And as such, it can be very useful for a lot of startups that need either to map an address to a location or like this to give directions. This is a product that I quite like. Unfortunately, it's for Britain only, but um, it's, it gives you cycling directions, but with a very high um, amount of detail paid to um, the best streets for cycling. And, and it's largely based on OpenStreetMap data, so you, they'll avoid cobbled streets and, and uh, unlit streets at night and things like that. And so it, it, it enables, I think, a whole new range of, of products. And um, uh, as such, I think it, it's great to, to just feed a bit the, the startup scene with um, something that they can use. When th this could look funny, but one thing that I often think about is future historians. Um, I, I would... I would argue that OpenStreetMap probably has a better chance as, as, at still existing in some form in 50 years or 100 years than Google Maps. Uh, not as an active website, that's probably not going to happen, but the database is being copied all over the world every day, and I think there's a good chance that some institution, some organization in 100 years is still going to have somewhere a copy of OpenStreetMap. Whereas, uh, well, Google's not probably not going to be around in 50 years, or they'll be like IBM, which is like a, a shadow of its former self. Um, and because the data is private and, and, and very, 
very protected uh, for, for, for obvious business and perfectly legitimate business reasons, um, it's probably never going to get spread as a data set as much as, as OpenStreetMap. So I like to think that in 100 years, people will wonder where someone in 2016 would have gone to buy clothes in Sofia, and they will know, ah, it was in Vitushka. Uh, or, or maybe some more serious uses as well, like the extent of the city, the extent of the growth of the city, and things like that. Um, and this, I, I actually didn't have anything else to put on that slide, but um, I, I kind of like the idea of stimulating competition. Uh, Google is in a pretty good position to have to build a monopoly on online maps. There's still Apple, there's still Bing, there's still a number of local players in, in their home countries, but Google is in a pretty good position to, to just become the only map solution. And generally, that sounds like a bad thing, having because because then they they, they control a lot of information and um, there's less incentive for for competition. So I think just just um, keeping things alive a bit, keeping the market alive, sounds like a good thing. What I would like you to to, to get from OpenStreetMap is how about uh, you have a look at, see if, if the things in your daily life are on the map. For instance, if you live in Sofia, you can see that on this screenshot, for instance, in Yavorov, we have a lot of addresses, but there's also a lot of buildings that don't. Uh, so how about you see if your home address or your work address or your favorite supermarket are on the map? It's very easy, as I said, using apps, you just you probably need to just to search your app store for OpenStreetMap, um, and there's lots of choices. Uh, to, to make modifications to the map, and you can probably see a number of errors in this map already. Um, so there, there's plenty to be done. Addresses are missing, uh, shops and amenities. It's getting decent in the center, but elsewhere, it's still, they're, they're still missing, and it's good to have a map of, of shops and amenities in general, schools, hospitals, whatever, and just everything, really. There, there's so much data that can go in there. Uh, even if you're just working on a small area, even if you're just making um, uh, small contributions, a lot of people making small contributions really goes a long way. Uh, outside of Sofia, there's also a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, so maybe next time you're in Malku Tornovu, uh, enter a few street names for me, that'd be great. Um, or postcodes, it would be great to have a good database of where all the postcodes, a free and fully open and redistributable database of where the postcodes are, or schools, or hospitals, and so on. Um, I'm just going to list a few but, uh, apps that you can use. Maps.me is pretty good for the absolute beginner. Um, it might be a good way of getting yourself hooked, but um, there's really a lot, uh, both for Android and for uh, iOS devices. Uh, just really just search for OpenStreetMap, you'll find plenty. And if you know of a good open data set, do get in touch. Um, it has to be absolutely free of any sort of legal uh, restrictions, but um, do get in touch, write something on the Bulgarian forum. It would be awesome if we could have a, a good high quality import for Bulgaria. It would probably be a lot of work, but um, I, I would certainly be very interested in hearing about it. Okay, so this is my last slide. Um, what I would like you to remember from this talk OpenStreetMap is a, a database of every object in the world. And as crazy as that, as that sounds, we're actually getting somewhere. Uh, we're at, we've actually managed to build something um, that's already usable, and it's still growing fast. Um, it's, not gonna, it, it, it's still in the early growth phase, basically. Um, so check back on the project in a couple of years. I'm sure it's, it's going to be uh, even better. Sofia is getting decent. Bulgarian cities are pretty good. Uh, Bulgarian villages need some love. Um, so um, let's, if, if anyone has an interest in, 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 in helping with that, that would be great. If you're a developer, if you want to use this data for your startup or for a personal project, for whatever, um, the API is very easy to get started with. The data structures are dead simple. And finally, small edits make a big difference. So don't think that you have to be like, uh, like, like that nerd who walks about with a paper and actually maps everything. Just, just adding a couple objects really would make uh, a big difference to the project. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, we only have time for a couple of questions, so... Uh, some of the commercial pro mapping projects that you mentioned have uh, some attempts at dealing with time-sensitive data, such as uh, road... 
I can, yeah. I'll, I'll repeat the question. Go ahead. So, is there any chance of doing transensitive things? Right. Uh, right. So, the question was whether there's plans on OpenStreetMap um, supporting time sensitive uh, 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 events like roadworks. Um, uh, not at the moment. Uh, the general rule is don't uh, include roadworks. But for instance, at the moment, there's massive roadworks that are going to last years in the center of Sofia. These have been put on the map because we just can't resist. Uh, yeah, they, 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 they've been there for a while, yeah. Uh, uh, but um, th th these are massive roadworks. Um, th there's, I think the idea is that OpenStreetMap will not include these, but there are like sister projects. Uh, I, I've, I wish I remembered the name, but th there's a project that was just started recently by a, a French developer uh, whose name I also forget, but um, maybe I can help you uh, find it afterwards. But it, it's based on OpenStreetMap, but tries to add exactly that uh, the time dimension to it. But OpenStreetMap itself tries to just ideally describe everything in, in, in the longer term. If we had the resources, it would be just everything as it is today, but the idea of not adding roadworks is that uh, people tend to forget to remove them afterwards. There were other questions? Uh, two questions. Wiki Mapia. The quality of uh, streets is awful, but there is uh, 16 millions of objects, especially outside cities and uh, roads. Is it uh, possible to import? Uh, and second one, excuse me, no. drones. Soon we will have a stream of uh, free, high uh, resolution drone. In, in images, how OSM will react. Right. Um, so uh, you were asking about Wikimapia. Wikimapia, unfortunately, is not 100% pure open data because it's traced from Google Maps satellite imagery. And that's actually against the terms of Google Maps. Now, the fact that Wikimapia is still around means that Google don't care. Um, but it has been mentioned a few times on the mailing list, and the the more legal-minded members of the community said we we can't import uh, Wikimapia because it's it's derived from Google's product. Um, and your second question was drone imagery. Drone imagery is definitely extremely useful, uh, and uh, there's a few project products already. Projects uh, there's one uh, open aerial imagery, I think it's called, and anyone who has uh, uh, either satellite imagery that they own, there's probably not many people in the world who own satellite imagery, um, or if people who own drones can just take their own images and upload them, and then you can just browse a map and see what imagery do I have available here. And that's extremely useful, and, and uh, we'll probably see a lot of development in that in the coming years. Yeah. Do we have time for more? I'm afraid not, because in about 10 minutes there will be the, the lightning talks session here in this room, so guys, take a break. You can find Herve uh, in the polls and ask him questions. Thank you, everyone, once again.